So you've clicked on this video because you want to break 100. Well, I'm going to show you some simple tips that are guaranteed to help you. So before I come on to the tips of how you're actually going to break 100, I want you to understand the concept behind it first. A normal golf course that you play will be roughly around about par 72. So that means you're allowed to shoot 27 over par. You're allowed nine double bogeys and nine bogeys. That's important for some topics I'll talk about later in this video. It means as long as you play within yourself, don't make any huge massive mistakes, you should be on track for breaking 100. Now and again, you might pick up some pars and who knows, you might even pick up the odd birdie. As long as you keep the big numbers off your card, that is a way of guaranteeing shooting a lower score. So tip number one, saving shots around the green. Sometimes taking the safer shot rather than the sexy shot is a key to help you shoot a lower score. Now, this is a great example for a shot where you can learn a lot from if you're trying to break under 100, trying to choose the correct option from here is really key. Now, as a better player or you watch it on tour, you would see very often a tour player, a really good player, grabbing loads of loft, a 60 degree club and almost flicking it up in the sky, landing it on the front of the green and rolling it towards the flag. That's ambitious because if that goes wrong, it could be disastrous. That shot, if it not hit correctly, you could thin it through the green or you could leave it a yard in front of you. So I'm going to show you a shot that I really need you to learn and get good at because it will really help you. I want you to go with your pitching wedge. And the reason for that is because it's gonna give you a little bit of loft, but the swing that you need for this type of shot isn't gonna be a massive length swing. A couple of good tips from here as well. Technique wise, I'm gonna get you to grip down on the golf club a little bit for a bit more control. Keep the stance narrow. And all we're gonna look for here is almost a putting stroke. I'm not looking at using my wrist too much. I'm very simply using my arms and the club as one unit. I'm not trying to flick the ball up in the air, skim the grass and use no wrists. So that's technique. Now what we're looking for a shot here is let's just take the flag out of the equation. Our best result here is to get it on the green and give ourselves a decent chance for a putt. But if not, if we hit it on the green and two putt, that's okay. The main objective is getting it on the green. So when I'm looking for a shot here, I'm not, again, I'm taking the flag out of the equation. I'm gonna land the ball somewhere near the front of the green, hopefully. And if it runs too long, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. What we don't wanna see is a ball landing or finishing here or one going all the way through the green. So putting stroke, grip down with the pitching wedge, pick a point at the front of the green. And it doesn't matter if it rolls too far, our objective is to keep it on the putting surface. And you know what, we take that, that's okay. And again, it's not sexy. Would I be massively happy with that shot? Not hugely, but that is on the green. Two putts from there, we're walking off with our bogey or we're walking off with our double bogey. Really important. My next point is really important. Three putts are okay in certain situations. For example, here, I'm on the green, but I'm miles away from that flag. In fact, I'm over 60 feet away from that flag. Now, obviously the best players in the world, they want a two putt from here. But if you're trying to break 100, three putting from here is not the worst case in the world. It's better than a four putt or a five putt, that's for sure. So manage your limitations, manage your expectations, shall I say. From here, if we get it rolling up and fairly close within 10 foot and knock it in from two from there, happy days. So just remember, if you are a long way away, three putting is okay. Now for a full round of golf, 18 holes, it wouldn't be a terrible idea as well just to track your putts as you're playing. Ideally, we wanna be trying to get 36 putts for a full 18 holes or lower. That'd be a good little almost side target to trying to break 100. Now one tip I will give you from here though, Something I see a lot of golfers make the mistake of if they do get the speed wrong is they've not judged whether the putt is uphill or downhill. They'll spend a lot of time working out whether it's right to left or left to right, but then completely underestimate up and down. This putt is tremendously uphill. So a little tip, once you figure that out and you know it's uphill, have a couple of practice putts, almost looking at the hole and trying to get that gauge of speed. What sort of length 
stroke are you going to need to get it as close to that hole as possible one last look at the flag we know it's uphill and certainly on a putt like this you've got to give it a massive whack now that's not bad no guarantee for two putt there but it's not disastrous you're certainly not four putting from there so tip number two three putting is okay in certain situations My next point is how to play par threes better. Par three is a wonderful opportunity to get it close to the green, maybe even on the green. Who knows, you might make a par, worst case a bogey. The thing we don't want to do is make a big number on a par three. So, when you get to the team ground, before you pull a club, just have 10 seconds to figure out where you want to finish your golf shot. Where do, where's the best situation? For example, this hole, all the trouble is at the front of the green. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go in those bunkers at the front. There's no trouble beyond the green or past the flag. So to the middle of the green here, it's 155 yards. But really, I want to be hitting this about 165 yards. Be a very, almost a careful caddy. Have that little insight to go, I'm going to hit one extra club here because I know that if I hit it long and towards the back of the green, I'm all right, I'm safe there. Likewise, if you're playing a par three where all the trouble was at the back of the green and there was no trouble at the front, maybe take a club less. Stay away from the trouble, it's really key. And another little tip, par three is a great opportunity to give yourself a perfect lie. When you tee the golf ball up, tee it up a little bit off the ground, just a touch. You don't want it sky high, you just want it just pipping out the top of the grass. Pitcher a nice shot, so I know here now I've got plenty of club. I'm gonna to commit to this shot. If I hit this full, I know this is gonna go more towards the back of the green and that's okay. Avoiding trouble is key. I've hit that very nicely. And that should be on the back of the green and I'll take that every day. It has just run over the back but a little chip or maybe a putt, we are eliminating that big number. It's really important, certainly playing par threes. Okay, last point, and I think it's a really important one, and it's kind of a two-part point as well. I'm here on the third hole, and it's the hardest hole on this golf course, stroke index one. It's 401 yards, and on the tee box, it says it's a par four. Now, if you're trying to break 100, we need to change our mindset a bit on this. We need to turn this into a par six. And if we can make a six on here, a double bogey on the hardest hole in the golf course, we are well on track of having a good result. The reason why it's a two-part thing is it ties quite nicely into equipment as well. I recommend every golfer being able to hit driver. I really do. I think driver is a club you need to have in the bag. However, it's not a club you need to have in your bag or hit great to try and break 100. Once you break 100 and you want to get better, start breaking 90, 80, and certainly towards 70, learn how to hit driver and learn how to hit it well. Really important. But on a hole like this, a big club, a driver or a three would actually get you in more trouble. There's trees right, there's hazards everywhere. And if we hit a duff tee shot, it's going to really cost us. So. We're going to choose a club and plot our way down this hole. If we've got par six in mind, we can afford to hit every, pretty much every full shot. If we hit a full shot, 130 yards, we're almost getting on the green in three shots. That means we can have a little chip onto the green and two puts, you're making your six. So choose a club you're comfortable with that hits roughly that distance, whether it be a, a seven iron or an eight iron, whatever it may be. And think you're going to plot your way down there. If you played this hole 20 times and 10 times you went with hitting driver and 10 times you choose more of a lofty club and trying to position yourself down there, I would almost guarantee this option, the, the thinking man's option is gonna be a better result most of the time. So pick your options. Par six, play it as that. Start off with your first shot, hitting 133 yards. You might not hit the fairway, that's okay. You'll be close. Then your second shot down the middle of the fairway, your third shot getting close to the green, a chip on, a couple of putts, and hey presto, you've gone through the hardest hole in the golf course with a very respectable score. So all in all, all those points we've talked about in this video is 
damage limitation. Doesn't have to be pretty golf to break 100. Doesn't have to be sexy golf. Doesn't have to be perfect golf. What we do have to avoid is those big numbers. Get out there, enjoy it. And I can't wait to hear when you start breaking 100. Tag me in it on social media. Guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, lots more to come. And enjoy starting shooting in the 90s.